retarded and he thinks he's smart. Hmm. He thinks he's so smart. He's not smart. He's not Al Heyman. He swears like he's Al Heyman, bro. You're not Al Heyman. After a dramatic turn of events, Devin Haney has finally sued Ryan Garcia for fraud, battery, and unjust enrichment. Um, I'm pissed off. Plus, Devin Haney's suing me for making, for hurting his feelings. <laughs> yeah, I don't really, I don't know, I, I don't really understand that law. Like, is he, like, he's literally gonna sue you for, for what? For... For lost money, for lost wages, I don't. I, I guess I'm confused. Or Bill Haney, father and trainer of Devin Haney, shared his frustrations following the fight between Devin and Ryan Garcia. Bill emphasized how Oscar De La Hoya's promotion company, Golden Boy Promotions, was financially rewarded despite the controversy and damage caused by Garcia's actions. Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy Promotions were awarded one million dollars for damages for the fight. Devin Haney first. Ryan Garcia. I ask uh, one question: Is why would Oscar De La Hoya and, and Golden Boy Promotions receive one million dollars in damages? What damages did they? Bill Haney continued expressing his frustration, revealing that both Devin Haney Promotions and Devin Haney himself are now taking legal steps against Ryan Garcia. Bill also pointed out Bob Arum publicly criticizing him for making statements against their camp. For that, Devin Haney Promotions and me. We thankful to Devin Haney and stepping up and allowing us to do our job with Devin Haney Promotions and sue the entire outfit. So with that saying, the suit stands and Hall of Fame promoter Bob Aaron, I'm ashamed that you as an attorney also would advise that fighters don't sue. I mean, haven't you been sued before? Marvin Hagler, uh, Terrence Crawford, um, you know, so... Welcome to boxing and the Devin Haney era. On April 20th, 2024, Ryan Garcia pulled off a shocking upset by defeating Devin Haney by majority decision at the Barclays Center in New York City. The scorecards read 112, 112, 115, 109, and 114, 110, favoring Garcia. However, controversy erupted when Garcia tested positive for the banned substance Osterine in both pre-fight and post-fight drug tests conducted by VEDA. This led to Devin Haney filing a lawsuit against Garcia, accusing him of battery, fraud, and unjust enrichment. Golden Boy Promotions, Garcia's promoter, was also named in the lawsuit. Bill Haney looked offended by Bob Arum's remarks which he made about the suing mess happening in the boxing community. Bob Arum, the CEO of Top Rank, voiced his opinion against fighters taking legal action over disputes. Arum, a seasoned boxing promoter, emphasized that fighters should settle their differences in the ring rather than resorting to lawsuits, believing that the sport itself is the appropriate place to resolve such matters. He said, I don't want to talk about it. Fighters shouldn't sue each other. They just fight in the ring. Greg Hackett, a respected voice in the boxing world, shared his thoughts on the ongoing situation between Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. He acknowledged the critical role Devin Haney's father, Bill Haney has played in his son's career. Hackett emphasized that Bill has consistently made sound decisions to guide his son, both inside and outside the ring. To be, truth, to be truthful, man, Dev, uh, father has been making great decisions for his son. I think this is another great decision. Greg Hackett continued his perspective by acknowledging that while he personally wouldn't take the same legal route as the Haney's, he understands their reasoning from a business standpoint. However, he recognized the strategy behind targeting someone's financial stability as an effective method in the business world. Would I do it? Nah, because I'm a different type of person. I didn't grow up with the same guidance as a Devin Haney. You know what I'm saying? So my mind think a little different. I would want to really hurt Ryan Garcia. But in business, uh, and in the financial world, they always use that term, you got to hit them where it hurt, which is the pockets, which is the bank. Greg Hackett first expressed that he understands why Devin Haney and his team decided to pursue legal action against Ryan Garcia. Hackett emphasized that what Garcia did wasn't right, and Haney's team likely wants to ensure that Garcia truly understands the gravity of his actions. From Hackett's viewpoint, this lawsuit seems to be their way of sending a strong message, making sure Garcia realizes that his actions were not acceptable. He said, I can see Devin doing that because, you know, I mean, not only what he did wasn't right, but we really want to make him pay for it. We really want him to understand like, yo, that shit wasn't cool. Hackett reflected on the uncertainty of the situation. He noted that while taking legal action might seem like an appropriate way to handle it, it could also 
also be something the Haney team simply felt was the right move to prevent such incidents in the future. Hackett remained neutral, suggesting that only time would reveal the outcome and the motivations behind their decision. He added, It don't need to happen again, but you never know. That might be just something they want to do. The New York State Athletic Commission has overturned Ryan Garcia's majority decision win over Devin Haney after Garcia tested positive for the performance-enhancing drug Osterine. This decision has restored Haney's undefeated record, with the fight's result being changed to a no contest. Garcia has been suspended for a minimum of one year, starting from the fight date on April 20th. In addition, he will forfeit his $1.1 million purse to Golden Boy Promotions and pay a $10,000 fine to the commission. The news of the settlement between Garcia's legal team and the NYSACA was first reported by boxing writer Dan Raphael. In a statement to ESPN, Haney expressed his satisfaction with the ruling. The facts are the facts, and I wasn't on an even playing field. Happy I was able to receive justice. He emphasized the importance of clean competition in boxing and his desire to advocate for fair play. Devin Haney reflected on the negotiation process of his fight and acknowledged that certain aspects were overlooked during the discussions. He openly admitted that there were things they could have handled better. Still, he emphasized that the negotiations were solely managed by him and his father without the involvement of outside parties. In hindsight, looking back, do you think y'all missed some opportunities Absolutely. in the negotiations? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I definitely think that we missed a lot of things uh, negotiating, but um, me and my pops, we negotiated that fight. You know, it wasn't, you know, uh, it wasn't anybody else. Despite the hurdles, Haney remains focused on improving and learning from the process. Devin Haney continued his reflection on the negotiation process, explaining that the experience was part of the growing pains in his career. He acknowledged that while they secured a larger portion of the financial split, they overlooked other important aspects. This taught them valuable lessons that they will carry forward in future negotiations. It's just part of the, you know, the growing pains. We missed out on some on some things. You know, we took more of the pie as far as, you know, the the, the, the money. But um we just missed out on some 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 very valuable things that you know we learned. Devin Haney reflected on the anticipation surrounding the fight with Ryan Garcia, noting that both his team and the boxing world had high expectations for the event's success. However, Haney and others noticed that Garcia appeared different this time around, both in his demeanor and performance leading up to their fight. He said, I think that everybody thought that the fight was going to be huge. Um, we thought the numbers were going to, you know, go through the roof and we seen Ryan do, you know, we seen a different Ryan Garcia than we seen leading up to the, to the tank fight. Haney recalled how Eddie Hearn, after the fight, made sense of the surprising performance and underwhelming results. Haney explained that it was only after the fight had concluded that Hearn shared his thoughts on what might have gone wrong, further emphasizing the unexpected turn of events. He added, It was just a totally different, totally different, the whole world was thrown off by it. So once after the fight, that's when that's when Eddie was like, oh, I think this is what it was. Osterine, the substance found in Garcia's system, is an anabolic agent that is on the World Anti-Doping Agency's banned list. While Garcia knocked Haney down three times during their bout, his weight, which was 3.2 pounds above the division limit, made him ineligible to claim Haney's WBC super lightweight title. The fight had been downgraded to a non-title bout due to this. Eddie Hearn expressed his views on the issue of performance-enhancing drugs in boxing, pointing out that current penalties for fighters caught using PEDs may not be strict enough to deter them from cheating. He cited Ryan Garcia's situation as an example, noting that even though Garcia received a one-year ban, the actual punishment might not be as severe as it seems. Hearn said, I think this is actually a good thing to deter fighters from using performance-enhancing drugs because the penalty is not strict enough. Like, Ryan Garcia is a good example where he got a year's ban by the time you have six months off and a little break, you're going back into camp. Eddie Hearn expanded on his thoughts, explaining that while a one-year ban might not be a strong enough penalty for using performance-enhancing drugs, the financial impact of potential legal action could serve as a much more effective deterrent. Hearn mentioned that legal cases related to doping are becoming more significant in the sport and could change the way fighters think about cheating. But the deterrent of losing tens of millions of dollars is, is much worse. So now that there's a potential legal action against someone that takes performance enhancing drugs, I actually think it's a pivotal moment for the sport in that respect. And you know, I've spoken to a lot of lawyers about it. I, it's certainly not clear cut either way, but they believe the case has a lot of merit. 
and it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Ryan Garcia took to social media to address Bill Haney, Devin Haney's father. He hinted that Bill had a role in continuing the fight despite the circumstances and what Ryan described as a beating. Garcia implied that Bill could have intervened during the match but chose not to, potentially allowing the damage to worsen. Garcia posted, I asked you Bill to stop the fight. You let the battery continue. You wanted this beating to concur. Bill Haney responded with harsh criticism toward Ryan Garcia, claiming that Garcia's boxing career had been fabricated. Haney implied that when Garcia had the chance to become a true champion, he chose to cheat rather than face the challenge honestly. Bill Haney shared a question he asked ChatGPT, asking them to summarize what Ryan Garcia has accomplished in life. Bill Haney shared a prompt, talk trash in a few words about what Ryan Garcia has accomplished thus far in life? In response, the answer provided was, Ryan Garcia's biggest accomplishment so far? Racking up Instagram followers? Not championship belts. Bill Haney shared this on his X wit A caption, the clown Ryan Garcia whole boxing career is manufactured. When that time came to become a champion, he was scared and cheated. Keep talking punk, but you will continue to pay for being a drug cheat. Although Garcia's suspension applies in New York, other athletic commissions are expected to follow suit. Osterine has been banned by WADA since 2008, with notable cases including Amir Khan, who was banned for two years for using it during his 2022 fight with Kell Brook. In response to these events, Haney filed a lawsuit against Garcia on Friday, seeking damages for battery, fraud, and breach of contract due to Garcia's doping violation. Garcia, however, took to social media to mock the situation. He posted on Instagram, I'm being sued for doing my job, and compared the entire situation to a Netflix documentary. Garcia has continued to deny any wrongdoing, expressing frustration over the accusations. Eddie Hearn weighed in on the impact of this lawsuit on boxing, discussing how it could be a turning point for the sport. Following the controversy, Garcia agreed to a one-year suspension and the forfeiture of his $1 million purse. His win was officially changed to a no contest. Hearn shared his thoughts saying, this could be a pivotal moment for boxing because if Haney wins this case, it could start to deter fighters from using performance enhancing drugs. Hearn also noted the financial implications of the lawsuit adding, Ryan Garcia gets a year ban, but if he loses tens of millions of dollars, it puts a different spin on it. Devin Haney's lawsuit focuses on the argument that he would have refused to fight Garcia had he known about the Osterine use beforehand. He is seeking damages for physical injury, reputational harm, and emotional distress caused by the incident. Haney's claims also extend to Golden Boy Promotions, accusing them of breaching their agreement for a clean fight. Devin Haney discussed how Ryan Garcia appeared different leading up to their fight compared to his previous performance against Gervonta Tank Davis. He emphasized that Garcia's behavior and presence were noticeably unusual, which caught the attention of many people, including Haney and the boxing world. This unexpected shift in Garcia's demeanor raised questions, and it was after the fight that Eddie Hearn commented on what might have caused this change. Everybody thought that the fight was going to be huge. Um, we thought the numbers was going to, you know, go through the roof. And we've seen Ryan do, you know, we've seen a different Ryan Garcia than we've seen leading up to the, to the tank fight. It was just a total totally different. different. The whole world was thrown off by it. So once, after, after the fight, that's when, that's when Eddie was like, oh, I think this is what it did. Really? Yeah. As this legal battle unfolds, it raises important issues about fairness and the consequences of drug use in sports. Haney's decision to pursue justice through the courts reflects his commitment to accountability in boxing. The outcome of this case could have a lasting impact on both Ryan Garcia and the sport as a whole. The boxing world now watches closely, anticipating what this ruling could mean for the future of fair play in the ring. Ryan Garcia's suspension is set to last until April 2025, after which he may return to the ring. Meanwhile, Devin Haney has no fight scheduled, and the legal battle between the two boxers continues to unfold. Rashiem Jefferson Jr. commented on the ongoing situation between Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia, expressing his strong belief that Haney should seek full compensation for what transpired during their fight. He framed the situation as Garcia deliberately trying to gain an unfair advantage that could have ended Haney's career or worse. Jefferson said, I think Devin Haney should get everything he can get out of this, uh, this situation, because Ryan Garcia really tried to kill that man. Um, he really tried to end his life end his career and everything with knowingly taking steroids and, um, not losing the weight and coming in as a bigger guy. Rashim Jefferson Jr. highlighted how difficult it is for a fighter to maintain their energy and performance as their body becomes more depleted. He pointed out that Devin Haney remained a professional and pushed his body to its limits, whereas Ryan Garcia, knowing he had an advantage by not making weight, 
did not face the same physical challenges. He added, I think get everything he need out the whatever he can do and whatever allegation he can come up with, whatever anything. We got some you want to bring up. Bring it up, bro. You deserve that. Jefferson fully supported Haney's pursuit of justice, but Teofimo Lopez have another point of view. Teofimo Lopez expressed concern that Haney's actions and results were causing him to lose favor with fans. Lopez believed that Haney's recent losses, in and out of the ring, were damaging his reputation and making people less interested in watching his future fights. Um, I think Devin just is continually like just taking losses uh, in and out the ring. It's not a good look. It doesn't look well. I mean, it's a turnoff. It's a. It gets everybody like kind of a, in, a, in, a, in a sense it turns everybody off. It keeps them away from wanting to see the next Devin Haney fight by doing those things. Teofimo Lopez continued by sharing his own experience of dealing with setbacks in the ring. He reflected on how he handled being jobbed or wronged in the past, explaining that he didn't resort to complaints or legal actions. Instead, he focused on recovering, improving, and coming back stronger, believing that this is the way to earn respect and maintain a positive reputation with fans. He added, I didn't do that when I got jobbed. When I got jobbed, I didn't, dude. I just got back, took care of my health, and we came back and conquered. That's all you got to do. That's how you earn your respect and how you stay in the people's eye. Lopez highlighted the importance of resilience and focusing on the sport, rather than external distractions, as the key to maintaining fan support and career success. Haney's team has also pointed out that Garcia made a public bet with Haney before the fight, which resulted in Garcia paying Haney $600,000 after missing weight. Garcia's majority decision win has now officially been overturned to a no contest, restoring Haney's unbeaten record of 31-0. Bozy Ennis provided his analysis of the fight between Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, focusing on the technical aspects of each fighter's performance. He observed that Garcia left himself exposed during the match, often keeping his hands down when throwing punches. According to Ennis, this presented opportunities for Haney to capitalize on, but Haney didn't fully take advantage of Garcia's defensive flaws. Ennis said, the way Ryan fought, he was wide open and everything though. You know, Devin didn't capitalize on a lot of stuff that he was doing. He had his hands down when he was throwing shots and stuff like that. Despite these openings in Garcia's defense, Ennis acknowledged that Garcia did what he needed to do to secure success in the fight. He praised Garcia for letting his hands go and being effective with his punches, particularly highlighting Garcia's powerful left hook, which Haney struggled to evade throughout the fight. Ennis added, but he did what he's supposed to do. Ryan, he let his hands go, and he was successful. He really couldn't get away from the left hook. Devin Haney further criticized Ryan Garcia's approach during the fight, pointing out that Garcia kept repeating the same mistakes without adjusting his strategy. Haney felt that if he had been in Garcia's corner, he would have offered better advice to improve his defense and counter the repeated left hook from Haney. He emphasized the importance of keeping hands up and reacting properly to avoid getting hit. He added, Ryan was doing nothing, he just came out doing the same thing over and over. You know, I would have told you, man, if I was in the corner, I would have told him, listen, keep that hand up, don't pull back, you know what I mean. Try to get as close as you can and smoke his shots too. The old Judah acknowledged the accusations against Ryan Garcia for allegedly fighting with drugs in his system and commented on the ongoing legal action being pursued by Devin Haney. Judah expressed doubt over how much Garcia truly cared about the situation, suggesting that Garcia has likely moved on, while Haney is now focused on seeking justice through a lawsuit. The, the, the guy fought, he said he fought with, you know, dirty, he fought with, you know, with drugs in his system. I don't know, you know what I mean? And uh, I mean, personally, I mean, definitely gonna do what he gotta do for Ryan. Ryan, Ryan took off, he don't, Ryan don't really care, you know what I'm saying? So, Devin is just, I don't know, he's just going after him now on a lawsuit. Yoel Judah further elaborated on his views, making it clear that there's no room for mistakes when it comes to using performance-enhancing drugs. He emphasized that taking drugs is a conscious decision, and if someone chooses to do so, they must deal with the consequences. Judah firmly rejected any suggestion that Garcia's drug use could have been accidental. He added, you can't slip, you can't slip up on drugs, you can't do that. Either you take them or you don't, and if you took them, then you see what happens, you know what I'm saying? But he didn't slip up though. No, no way. A potential re match between Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia seems to be in the air, with Haney hinting that if it happens, it will be on his terms. When asked about a rematch, Haney made it clear that he had already tried things on Garcia's terms, and it didn't work out. He emphasized that it wasn't him who caused the issues but Garcia, and this time, Haney would be the one setting the conditions and cleaning up the mess. Do you want that rematch with Ryan Garcia? Is that something that's like, man, I gotta get that back? He was right here, I get it back right now. Because <laughs> it's just... You know, if somebody if somebody did you like that, you 
you want to take it because I, I, I did that already. I, tr I tried it. I tried to do a fair fair. I tried to, you know, it was three, three since the amateurs. I tried to give you that, you know, that, that, that another fight and we was even, we was drug test. We was on even playing, even playing field. And you, I did it. I did everything right. I came back clean. I am a competitor. I am competitive. Um, and see, everything got to be right. You know, everything got to just be on my terms and everything got to be, I try to do it on your terms. I try to give you that. And you show why you don't deserve that. Will this lawsuit set a new standard for accountability in boxing? Or will it be seen as a controversial move that blurs the lines between competition and legal action? What do you think? Should fighters take their disputes to the courtroom? Or should the ring be the final decider? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to follow for more updates on this developing story.